Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mary Weber. My company name is Travel Guru Girl. And today I'm going to give you my travel inspirations with Travel Guru Girl. My website is www.travelgurugirl.com and capricegirlsonthego.com. My email is mweber with two b's at tpi.ca. So yesterday I was asked to give a presentation and, and do some traveling virtually. And so I thought I would just repeat that particular one instead of doing a Facebook Live today. Just because it's a lot easier to, when you're talking about travel to actually have some pictures to go with it. And uh, it gives you a good overall picture of traveling virtu virtually around the world. So let's take a look what we can do. Uh, the last year showed us that uh, so many of us wanted to go, but we couldn't. And it made us reflect on all the places that we, we might want to go to. So I have a presentation. I'm just going to share that screen now. And here we go. <clears throat> So we're all travel dreaming. We are not the same. So that means we don't all have the same travel dreams. So I might want to go somewhere, but maybe my best friend or family member doesn't want to go there. So it's important to kind of decide what's important to you and uh, maybe do a vision board because that might help uh, line it up a little bit easier for you to decide where you might want to go. And what's important to you may not be important to someone else. So it's it's nice to be on the right page sometimes. So let's go and see where we can go. So right now we're currently in our backyards um, and we're looking forward to going somewhere soon. So when we look at that, we're going to be planning where we wanna go. So who's gonna go with us? Uh, is it our family? Is it my husband? Is it um, a group of people you know? Is it a couple of women or a group of women? Uh, you decide. And when are you going? Where are you going? Uh, what kind of things do you want to do when you get there? How long are you going for? How much money do you want to spend on this trip? Um, and what and how are you going to get there? So is it going to be an all inclusive? Are you flying? Are you doing a tour? Are you doing a cruise? Are you doing a combination? Um, and then why are you going? Is it for rest and relaxation? Is it for fun? Is it for history? Is it for genealogy? Is it for a special occasion, an anniversary or a wedding or a honeymoon? All of those things. So make your picture and, and start working on that. And that will help make that travel dream become a reality. So the first place we might be go, going is somewhere in Canada, uh, maybe to the mountains. Uh, maybe to somewhere in BC, maybe to the East Coast, to Quebec City or Montreal or Ottawa, Toronto, uh, the Maritimes, and maybe to Newfoundland. I know Newfoundland is on my list. So other uh, people have been wanting to get away on their rest and relaxation beach getaway or all inclusive. So where might that beach be? Is it Hawaii or Mexico or Thailand or something more exotic like the Cook Islands or Tahiti, the Maldives? Costa Rica. Just think about that and start cutting out those pictures. If you're thinking of a special occasion like a wedding, an anniversary, a honeymoon, maybe you'll consider the Maldives or St. Lucia or Tahiti and the overwater bungalows. So aren't those a gorgeous place to go? Some of you are very active or maybe you recently became more active over the past year. Maybe you did a lot more walking and maybe you bought an e-bike like I did. So maybe you would consider doing a walking or a cycling holiday or a yoga or a spa or wellness getaway. So those are all things to think about and different ways of doing a vacation. So walking trips are good because they can be guided or self-guided. And self-guided means that you will get the instructions of getting to A to B and everything will be figured out for you. You just have to walk. Um, you can decide whether that's 
uh, what country you want to do that because they're available worldwide. The fitness levels are one to nine and, and most can be in the two to three range, which is achievable for most people. And you'll have beautiful landscapes and it's not crowded. And you really are in touch with nature and the small villages and the people that live there. And it's just a wonderful experience. So I did one in France a couple of years ago and it was a great experience. So you can either stay in one one center and what will happen there is that you'll go out daily to different desti um, to walking destinations and then you'll come back to the same place or you'll go from point to point which is what we did and then your lug luggage is transferred if there's a day that you don't feel like walking you don't have to and uh, you can get a ride with your luggage so a good example of this is the Pass of the Amalfi Coast. It's self-guided. In other words, you get all your instructions on how to travel. It's good for solos, for couples, for families. It's beautiful scenery. Uh, it's in Italy. The food is wonderful. So, And it's one hotel stay. In other words, you'll be eating most of your meals there and you'll get your um, instructions about where you're going every day as well. So wonderful way to go. And it's at activity level of two. Another one that you might want to consider is the Cinque Terre in um, Italy. And here it's mostly walking. It's five little villages that are on the coast of uh, Italy. And you can only either walk this, take a train, or take a boat around here where you would actually be able to see what this looks like on the coast. So it's a great experience. You can stay in one of the little villages and um, I can't say enough about this uh, region of Italy. Uh, if you're considering cycling and you just want to get started on it, um, Holland is a good destination. It's fairly flat. This is a leisurely self-guided of number two rating, uh, point to point, point, and you can rent e-bikes for this particular trip as well. So if you're a little bit um, unsure of whether you could handle a regular bike, then I would recommend an e-bike. So for the women travelers, where would you like to go? It could be a wellness vacation or a spa. It could be with yoga options. There's a lot of people that are interested in that. If you're a yoga teacher, you may want to consider taking a group somewhere too, to one of these countries, whether it's Costa Rica or Thailand or Bali. And this is just some of the pictures from Bali. Thailand. Then shorter trips, uh, you've got maybe two or four of you that want to go somewhere um, or, or a larger group. Uh, it could be Nashville or New York or Las Vegas or Disneyland or Disney World. There are some people that are hooked on Disney and they go every year. I know somebody that's been going for the last 20 years every year. Then there's golf getaways and Napa Valley wine tours as well. If you have hobbies and interests, special event itineraries on river cruises might be of interest to you. So um, next year, there's a number of specialty cruises that are happening. One of them is Floriad, and that happens once every 10 years in Holland. And this would be appeal to gardeners and flower enthusiasts. Anyone that enjoys the outdoors and loves to, loves to see flowers, I think you would enjoy it as well. Uh, it takes place in Holland, so it lasts for about six months uh, for, um, let's say, from April to September, October of next year. So you can do this by a uh, river cruise. You can do this as a tour. You could do it as a day tour as well um, if you're in Europe and you just want to take it in. Uh, we have a um, famous gardener here, Frankie Flowers in Canada, and he's going to host one of those cruises to Fleuriat next year. So if you follow him, perhaps you'd be interested in going on a cruise with him. And, and he's going from Amsterdam to Zurich. So that's a nice itinerary. And then you do get to spend time with him for special events during the cruise. Storytellers. So if you're an avid reader or watch TV, you would have uh, seen Sex in the City. And that's the writer of that was Candace Bushnell. And she's hosting a cruise from uh, Paris to the Normandy beaches next year. And they take in um, other cities like G Givenchy, uh, where um, Monet did his painting, had his house. Then there's Rouen, where uh, there's lots of uh, old history so and then of course the normandy landing beaches so that might be of interest 
this writer, Gillian Flynn, wrote Gone Girl, and she's doing a modified uh, Danube cruise. It's from uh, in September of 2022, and there is a limited number of single supplement waived cabins on this. So if you're a solo uh, traveler, you might be interested in this particular thing. There wouldn't be a ton of those cabins available. So if you're interested, you should act on it. Uh, the idyllic Rhone is another one, and that's from Nice to Lyon, a very well-known food and wine destination. Lynn Crawford is a Canadian chef, and Tommy Smythe is, is a designer, so you might want to join them on their cruise. Oberammergau is the passion play that is held in Oberammergau, Germany, Germany, only every 10 years. This play has been going on since 1634. It was recently moved from 2020 to 2022 because of COVID. Uh, what's interesting to note is that the actors can only come from this little village and they practice for up to a year before they start doing performances the following year. So uh, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And you again, you can do this by cruise or tour. It is a little bit more difficult for an individual to be able to pick up tickets by themselves. Uh, Italy is always a great destination that everyone wants to go to. The food, the wine, the people, the history, you can't get enough of it. So there you have uh, Venice and Cinque Terre, Florence, Rome, and of course the Amalfi Coast and other points uh, throughout Italy. I have barely touched it. Italy's for everyone. So if you enjoy cooking classes and history and wine and food, you'll enjoy this. Uh, one um, thing that I did want to mention is that Stanley Tucci did have a food series in Italy on CNN recently, and it was a great way to go along with him, uh, view Italy in a different way. While he was talking about food, he was also showing where he was, and it was just like traveling with a friend. So if you have an opportunity to, to watch that, then please do go ahead and, and search for that. Uh, you may want to travel for family history, and that could be somewhere in the UK or anywhere else in Europe for that matter, or anywhere else around the world because you want to search for family history or roots. Uh, a popular destination for that, of course, is Scotland and Ireland. And uh, Ireland seems to be one of the number one destinations that a lot of people want to go to. If you're looking at bucket list, uh, travel may start to look a lot more different in the future. In the next little while, a lot of tours and cruises will require that everyone is uh, fully vaccinated. Uh, plus, they still may require tests before you get on the ship, et cetera, et cetera. So there will be ongoing changes in the next few months that will be coming forward. Uh, but you should be planning sooner rather than later. I think that there may be limited availability on some of these trips and you do need sometimes a year to two years in advance for certain bucket lists. So it's time to start saving and planning right now. Uh, if you want to go on an African safari, uh, the big five is often what you want to see. These are my pictures from Kenya and Tanzania. And of course, the big five are the lion, the rhino, the leopard, the elephant, and the buffalo. And the other fun critters, of course, are the zebra and the giraffe. And this is just a hot air balloon ride over the Masai Mara. If you're looking at the wildebeest migration, and you can see that there's probably a million of them, they, they move for food and water. So that usually happens in September and uh, sorry, August and September of any one year. You usually need at least one year in advance to be able to book uh, a trip on the migration uh, tour and uh, maybe up to two years as well. So it's it's really is a must see and that was something that I went to see. And then this is just more pictures of the migrations because the uh, uh, zebras also travel with the wildebeest. And of course, there was some uh, giraffes nearby as well. Egypt is uh, really coming back into popularity again. I went at least, well, I guess it was 11 years ago. Uh, this is a picture of the pyramids outside of Cairo and the camels were sitting there. And there's the Sphinx. And uh, here's a picture of me up on my camel ride and next to the Sphinx. And then, of course, you would add on your Nile cruise if you want to go there. 
Peru is on many people's lists, Machu Picchu. Uh, of course, other parts of uh, Peru are very interesting as well as you go. So you wouldn't just go to see Machu Picchu. There is a Amazon um, portion of, the, of Peru as well. So you may be interested in adding that on. You're not too far away from the Galapagos. So you may also want to add on the Galapagos if you're already there. The people are wonderful. It's very colorful and um, it's also a foodie destination. The food was absolutely outstanding. Australia, again, is on many people's list. Um, if it's their summer, it's our winter, so it's a perfect time for Canadians to get away. And uh, if you want to, you could take a cruise that might uh, encompass both Australia and New Zealand, or you may want to take a tour, or you may want to come and stay for a couple of months, and that's called a long stay, and then do rent a car or even a camper or something like that and uh, go to the places that you want to go to. So those are all possibilities. New Zealand is very popular as well. It's very similar to Canada. So a lot of people have that on, on their list. And, I, and from experience, I can tell you that it's absolutely wonderful place to visit. It's very much like Canada. And um, again, the people are wonderful uh, English speaking, so nobody would have a, a problem there and you would very much enjoy it. Uh, another one of my favorites was Vietnam and Cambodia, and I've been to Bali, Thailand, and Singapore. So again, I can attest to uh, how wonderful they are to visit. This is um, Angkor Wat in Cambodia. This is Bantare in Cambodia. And they're famous for their temples at Siem Reap. And then, of course, there's temples and different uh, visual things in um, uh, Thailand to see. Uh, Vietnam is outstanding. So those are just places that if you have the opportunity, I strongly encourage you to go. The history is unbelievable. People are wonderful. Food is outstanding as well. Uh, another part of South America, uh, Brazil might be on your list. Uh, it's number one for coffee. So you can uh, expect to have great coffee. There's beaches. There's um, Christ the Redeemer statue that you see high on top of that mountain. Uh, you can see the Iguazu Falls, that border in between um, Argentina and Brazil. You can go to the Amazon rainforest and you can go and see Sugarloaf Mountain as well. And this is just a few more photos of Vietnam. This is uh, Halong Bay, which is in North Vietnam. And then this is just a picture of a fisherman that I took off our boat uh, at sunset uh, along the Mekong River. Um, you can take food. Uh, at classes there, make uh, make your foe or fur, they call it. And again, a great experience. Israel um, and Jordan, of course, are very uh, um, popular. So Jerusalem, uh, of course, a good view of that. The Wailing Wall, uh, where uh, the men are praying on this side, and then on the other side is the women, they're separated. And this is a, just a picture of me and my husband when we were in Bethlehem. Iceland is on many people's list as well. We had Iceland Air, Air leaving from Edmonton uh, uh, that would stop over in Iceland on the way to Europe. So I'm not sure exactly what those air itineraries are gonna look like, but Iceland can be done as a stopover. There's also been some cruises at it. So um, Iceland can be fairly expensive. So if you prefer, you may want to take a cruise around Iceland, then you've got your floating hotel, or you may want to take a tour. You may want to do that stopover, or you may just want to go independently, but it may cost you a little bit more to do that. So there's so many places and so little time. Here's the Great Wall of China. I had the opportunity to actually walk, um, actually climb the Great Wall twice. Um, this is London, uh, Paris, Barcelona, Budapest, uh, Ephesus in Turkey. I can't say enough uh, about uh, Istanbul and Ephesus. Those are wonderful places to see, to see if you ever get the opportunity. There's Stonehenge and the Taj Mahal. I've not been to the Taj Mahal, but I understand it's outstanding as well, and it would be on my list as well. So to end, this is just a quick picture of me and my husband on a various different trips. And of course, I've got hundreds of pictures of different destinations, but we can only put so many in, in, in a short amount of time. So I hope you enjoyed our little trip around the world and maybe that gave you some ideas of things that you wanna do. 
I do have links to watch different virtual tours in different countries. So if you're interested in that, please let me know. I have a PDF guide that if you're interested in that, again, email me, a quick guide to river cru cruising in Europe. So a lot of you know about Viking, but there's more than Viking that actually cruise the rivers of Europe. So maybe Viking you weren't interested in, but there's other cruise ship companies that also sail a lot of those rivers. So you may want to just look and see and compare uh, what might be of interest to you. Uh, there's all different kinds of specialty cruise itiner itineraries that are offered. There's active and discovery, there's history, there's the music cruises, there's uh, the author cruises that I mentioned, the special uh, Fleuriette and Auber Amergau. So there's no end to the types of things that are available. So you may want to get that little PDF to do look at the comparisons. There's also a PDF that I have that's on sustainable, sustainable packing. So when we're talking about plastics and things like that, trying to get rid of a lot of that when we're traveling. Um, if you wish, you can subscribe to my newsletter and I try to update once a month and sometimes uh, twice a month, depending if I had something, some new news to share with people. And I will usually do a Facebook Live once a week for travel inspiration. So in, in lieu of the travel inspiration this week, I've actually done a little video uh, instead so that you could see my pictures. So hopefully that gives you some travel inspirations. If you're interested in getting any of the links or any of that other information, please email me at m. M as in Mary Weber, W-E-B-B-E-R at tpi.ca. Thank you so much with, uh, for being with me today. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you next week.